Um, okay, so these are, these were just some of the parallel computing concepts. And um, I would like to look at the infrastructure. So, so far you have been probably using a lot, just your laptop or uh, maybe more powerful desktop you, you have access to. Uh, basically this this is okay for for us data processing uh, this is very this is kind of insufficient because you are limited by your um, number of CPUs as I said probably it's not more than uh, more than eight on your laptop um, anybody has at least eight <laughs> how many do you have do you know anybody okay so you can check for Thursday to see how many you have I have only one yeah if you if you probably look in your like on Windows maybe task manager um, there you would have it like about yeah. how about in Linux for the uh, system yeah. monitor yeah and then <laughs> yeah um, it's one of the tabs there like system yeah. reports yeah that's so you have uh, yeah so you have four for example yeah one processor and two cores I have four yeah. what do you have I have two process, uh, four processors. There you go. So that's a strong machine. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's actually a processor and the CPU is, it's a kind of confusing it and is, I don't quite yeah. understand it, but I think it's like um, quad core means eight CPUs. So it's like you have some, they, they, they call it like virtual processors. Yeah. So the this is actual four, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, you yeah, that's that's four. You can run four, but actually, I think two of them are virtual. I, I I'm not quite sure how it works, but okay. How do you see? I have twelve on my computer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but but you are basically you can't get um, you can't get more than, well, you get with a powerful desktop you can get probably thirty. Yeah. So yeah, that that depends. Um, yeah. So then. Um, then when we go one level up, um, then uh, let's say we have some kind of server. Um, so typically servers, uh, they have tens of CPUs, uh, depends how much money you want to put into it. You can get up to like 100 CPUs, that really depends, but it won't be thousands. Um, so, uh, so servers typically, um, I'm just trying to distinguish a server from like cloud and the HPC we will be talking. Uh, so t typically servers are owned by some like a company or institution or school and they uh, you have uh, physical access to them. Um, so for example, we have servers in that server room there and, um, and the hardware is owned by the organization, which is a important uh, distinction. Uh, from the cloud um, and uh, you can usually have uh, remote access uh, to to the server um, so we have physical uh, physical access to the server uh, but you usually connect remotely so so that's good that's <clears throat> that works uh, probably for um, a lot of the UAS computations you would want to do, but then again, somebody has to actually have the server, right? And you have to have the access. Um, so then we have then we have cloud. Um, yeah, and cloud uh, can mean a lot of things. Um, basically, it's it's just a lot of computed uh, connected computers, um, and uh, the kind of main characteristics of cloud is that uh, the actual hardware and operating system, uh, the, these are basically hidden um, and abstracted and you don't see them, you don't work with, with them, you, uh, you access it through virtualization. So uh, on cloud, you can, you can set up um, uh, you can set up uh, different um, instances uh, of a system. So one example is the NCSU VCL, Virtual Computing Lab. That's a type of cloud. Uh, also, Amazon Web Services provide uh, provide cloud infrastructure. And uh, so this is just an example from uh, from the VCL, where you can set up 
you probably all have seen this. You can set up um, different uh, instances. So for example, here I have um, a Windows machine and two different uh, Linux machines set up and you can connect to them uh, and run stuff uh, or whatever you want to do with them. Uh, everyone has um, actually experience with NCSU VCL. Yeah, so, uh, but actually you, so you have all these instances, but you have no idea where it is running, where the physical computers are located, um, or what's the hardware or operating system on those computers. So uh, it's just totally uh, abstract and you just uh, use the virtual machines. Um, so the advantage of, uh, of cloud is that it's very easy for you to, to set up uh, to set it up for your computation because uh, you use some kind of familiar environment um, and you just ask you request the machine and that's it uh, with uh, the cloud cloud computing is actually not always uh, or mostly used for actual computing uh, for example Amazon web services they provide a lot of services in terms of hosting your website and running all kinds of um, uh, services, uh, not necessarily computing as we imagine, for example, UAS data processing. Uh, because uh, cloud is not actually that great for, uh, for high performance computing. Um, because what you, what you get is a virtual machine. And these machines, they, uh, they don't have a large number of CPUs. So you are kind of, uh, with cloud, you are kind of stuck with uh, what your server, your laptop server can, uh, can do. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's the cloud. And then we have the high performance uh, clusters, high performance computing clusters. Also, um, we can talk about supercomputers, which are just much bigger. Uh, clusters, um, and so that's that's the best in terms of uh, computing because you have thousands of CPUs. You can have also uh, GPUs. That really depends on the uh, specific uh, configuration. And um, so, how uh, HPCs differ from cloud? Um, so HPCs have nodes, um, and these nodes are connected together and they, uh, they communicate, uh, they have set up very fast communication between the nodes. And basically each node has, um, let's say tens of CPUs, uh, or it can have um, some number of GPUs. Uh, so you can have CPU or GPU class uh, nodes. And then you basically request the access to, uh, to several of the nodes. So suddenly you go from tens of uh, parallel processes to hundreds, thousands, uh, or even more if you actually run on a supercomputer. Um, and all the nodes, uh, they run the same things. So they basically just copy the, uh, the software, the data, or they access the data uh, in the same way. And they all run uh, this huge computation. Um, so, uh, so that's best in terms of computing, but it is actually very difficult for uh, like normal users to uh, to access these things. Uh, partially because uh, you don't get any usual access these things through command line. There is uh, that's the normal way uh, you are expected to to work on a cluster, um, and you are supposed to actually interact with the operating system which is the main operating system of the cluster. So there is no virtualization. So you can't request uh, a Windows uh, instance. Um, uh, basically, all HPCs and supercomputers run on Linux, or let's say Unix-based uh, operating systems. Uh, also, in terms of the programs you, you want to run on HPCs, um, not all programs can actually take advantage of this. So. Uh, because of the specific architecture of nodes, um, 
the programs have to basically somehow enable the communication between nodes. So uh, again, that depends on the particular uh, algorithms and programs you want to run on it. Uh, so NCSU HPC, um, Henry too. Uh, so uh, you can uh, you can request access to it. Um, you don't actually have to use multiple nodes if you don't if you don't want to, or if your program can't take advantage of it. Um, but uh, again, it's it's a it's a more involved process because you have to communicate with, uh, with the people who are actually running the HPC or taking care of it. Make sure that the, the software you want to run is installed there. So, for example, I know uh, people here have been using it with R. Um, so, so you can run R on it. Uh, there is Grass also installed, and there is a bunch of other programs which um, I don't know exactly. Um, so, um, so that's HPCs, and then we have supercomputers, which which is kind of similar in a sense. Uh, it has supercomputers have very specific hardware uh, software architectures, and you can basically imagine um, a huge hall of computers. So this is, for example, the Blue Water supercomputer um, in Illinois. We actually have been right there. It's so that's actually my picture, uh, <laughs> and and it's uh, it's super loud in there. You basically can't talk in there because of all the uh, heating or cooling systems. Uh, yeah, but it, it's a huge hall of supercomputers. Um, uh, and uh, what's interesting with su supercomputers, um, uh, in geospatial field, field, they are not used actually that much uh, because um, uh, geospatial computations require a lot of data. And uh, and memory. A lot of the supercomputers are not built uh, in a way which uh, which is suitable for geospatial computations. So they are used a lot in physics, biology. I think that's probably the, the most 